Angelica, we have waited a long time for this moment, haven't we? Yeah. Spring seems to have gone on for ages, but the good news is the sun is beginning to come out, and I have to say, we're delighted to be back here at Chelsea. It's really exciting. Oh, and great okay. to be back, partners in crime, yes. once again. Now, the gardens look incredible. The pavilion is bursting with colour and the showground is full of famous faces. And some Chelsea pensioners here are having a light bite to eat, aren't you? Say hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> the time of their lives there and we're going to be here every day this week to bring you at home all the tips and advice to get your garden ready for summer now we've got a whole team of experts at the ready so it can only be one thing it's time for the rhs chelsea flower show 2023 yes It's fabulous to be back, and if this garden is anything to go by, we're in for a treat this year, Nikki. This is the Savile's Garden. It's so good. It is incredible. Mark Gregory says it took him three years to prepare for Chelsea this year, and you can see why, yeah. can't you? I mean, you love your cooking. How's that for a kitchen? That's my dream. From pot to plate. <laughs> I Amazing. love that. And these trees are stunning hornbeams. You've got them in your garden, haven't you? I have. They're so wonderful because they give you privacy, but they also encourage the wildlife. And you have them pleached, so they sort of keep that shape, which it just feels like, well, we're in a very intimate kitchen and restaurant. Look at the Chelsea pensioners. They're having a whirl of a time. They're really enjoying it. <laughs> and then where we're going to be going afterwards, we're going to be joining them, aren't we? Exactly. And amidst all these flowers, I can see why you love it. Mm, wonderful. I might say it might be my favourite. Can I say that? It's only one day. Okay, Shh. don't tell anyone. Hold fire. Well, as always, there's loads to see, so it's going to be a jam-packed week, and our team of friendly faces will be on hand every step of the way to guide you through this year's show. So what have we got in store today? Well, Chelsea wouldn't be Chelsea without our queen of the pavilion. Of course, it's Carol Klein, and she's in search of some garden treasures that you'll definitely want this summer. Whether you've got green fingers or you're a complete novice, I've got some real crackers for you today. They're perfect for your windowsill, whether it's inside or out. They're Pelagoniums. And our man who knows his way around garden design, Toby Buckland, is here to help you get the Chelsea look for your own backyard. The gardens here at Chelsea might be big and grand, but don't let that put you off because I'm here with all the tips you need to transform your space with minimal effort and budget. And all week we'll be joined by a host of famous faces and who better to start with, none other than only Dame Joanna Lumley. Now, how fabulous is that? Fabulous. Yes, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but first, it's Monday. It's press day, which means only one thing. It's Frock Watch. Oh, and we definitely love a beautiful...
Chelsea is absolutely enormous. The whole site is as big as eight football fields and it's taken 8,000 people to create the event. The showground is stuffed full with thousands of plants, some from far-flung corners of the earth. Rachel de Tame is on a whistle-stop tour to soak it all up and share it with you. I have to say, if my train were late, I wouldn't mind waiting here one bit. We're off on a journey around the world, starting here on the platform garden. And I think it's beautifully planted. Maybe the platforms of the future should be just like this with plants everywhere. There's a gorgeous glossy tile on the wall and in front of it, this cotinus, the smoke bush, and those wonderful dark plummy leaves. And then the color is followed through into the flower there of that geranium phaeum. Really dark, luscious purple. It's a shade lover, so perfect. In one of the darker corners of the garden, I feel a bit like I'm plant hunting in this garden, which is called A Letter from a Million Years Past. And it's an evocation of the Jiri Mountains in South Korea. And it's filled with really wonderful plants. A lot of them are natives to that area. We've got things like the Thalictrum, beautiful, soft, mauve, fluffy flowers. And there's also a Japanese Szechuan pepper, which also grows in this area. I think it's very special, it's transported me right across the world. This garden is called Feels Like Home and it's no surprise actually that the designer is from New Zealand because everything here are either plants that are indigenous to New Zealand or plants that grow there commonly. And it's wonderful. I love that she's used the colours of New Zealand through the planting. So you've got the red there of the calistemon, the white silver like the astelia through to the black. And then behind me is the silver fern. Now that's the national fern of New Zealand. And it's reflected in that beautiful frond that curls over the water feature there. I have to say I haven't been lucky enough to go to New Zealand, but I feel like I've had just a little taste. I find myself basking in the heat of the Caribbean. I'm at the Barbados display and just look at the colour here. I mean this, the Kimmy ginger, so much of that colour. The ornamental banana as well I particularly like. But the Heliconia sexy pink I think takes the cake and it reminds me of flamingos trying to climb a ladder. It's just extraordinary. The whole display is just filled with sunshine. Finally, we find ourselves in Japan with this incredible display of bonsai. I mean, they are just mesmerizing. Look at the rhododendron, how much flower is packed into that. And there are some misconceptions about growing them. They are outdoor trees, they're not house plants, and many people actually keep them indoors, but they go outside. And there are lots that you can try that are good for beginners. So that's my whirlwind trip around the world. We're going to see more about bonsai later in the week. Thank you, Rachel, and safe travels. Now, this garden is something you'll all be familiar with. It's very much rooted in the heart of the great British countryside, with a look that inspires many of our gardens at home. Now, it's the Boodles Garden, and Tom Hoblin is the designer. It's lovely to see you again. Thank you, thank you. Now, is it true that this is going to be your final garden for Chelsea? Well, <laughs> I've done 10. This is my 10th one, and I do need a break, but I'll, I'll never say never again. No, because we love you here. And I love being here. So I think you'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> but this is your third garden for Boodles, your third and final yeah, one. Yeah, yes, it is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so tell us a bit about how you're celebrating British craftsmanship. I mean, obviously, that was the brief that was given yeah. to me. And, and, and when I started researching the idea, I realised, you know, we have this fantastic heritage of British craftsmanship. Yeah. So I sort of set myself a goal to, to use the very best artists and artisans and craftspeople that I could possibly find. So, for example, we've got this 
fantastic arbor made by Chris Cox, yeah. uh, and and we kind of really worked well together. We really um, you have it, a connection. We, yeah, well, yeah, it was great, and we were sort of sketching all these ideas about how we were going to capture a woodland feel as an arbor. Yeah, uh, because we sort of needed a building. Um, to be able to sort of show off more craftsmanship. Yeah. So, so um, for example, we've got this fantastic bench made uh, by Rachel Chudley, and it's using offcuts from the furniture industry. So, uh, so we've got quite a good sustainable approach. It, it, even the, the paving here is all the offcuts. When, when they cut out a boulder out of the quarry, they cut off the ends and, and the bits, and this is what this is all made out of. So it's all it's waste. It's from Chatsworth, isn't it? Yeah, from yeah. Chatsworth in Derbyshire. Yeah. And it's all waste stuff that's made, you know, been using the very best craftspeople. Jake, who, uh, who made all this wonderful stonework, worked for weeks and weeks and weeks to make this into a beautiful thing. Because, in, in my opinion, craftsmanship is taking something natural and stylizing it and refining it into something more beautiful. And that's what I'll try to do with all, all the things here. Well, you've done it successfully in thank my you, opinion. Thank also, you. I think what's lovely about this garden is that it really works for people who've got shady areas as well. So you can take some of these ideas. Yeah, I, I, very much so, um, because uh, it, this could work in a city garden, because if you think lots of city gardens, you know, small courtyardy gardens are full shade, which is really the same effect as a woodland. Mm. And uh, if you can imagine, I've, I've said in my brief that we get judged on that we've got mature trees all around here so a lot of this all this planting is is shade loving and can easily work in in urban situations and i'm loving this pool that sort yeah. of the raindrop effect is absolutely brilliant I, now now tom you won gold last year yeah yeah any pressure or are you just going to enjoy this I, moment trying not to think about it today's the best day at chelsea because we get to do all these wonderful things and meet these fantastic people you just but you've always got it at the back of your mind what if we don't get a goal? Tom, you'll always be gold in my eyes. <laughs> Thank so you, that's, that's very fine. <laughs> now, we promised you Carol at the start of the show. while well, the wait is over. Here she is with a beginner's guide to Pelagonians. The Great Pavilion is packed with wonderful flowers. But today, I want to shine the spotlight on a plant which is familiar and well-loved, but has hidden qualities. These are pelagoniums. Many of us know them as geraniums, but geraniums are a distinct family. They're hardy plants that we grow in our gardens. But in both cases, both pelagoniums and geraniums take their names from their seed heads, which resemble the beaks of different birds. In the case of pelagoniums, it's stalk spills. Lots of us know and love these plants, and mainly we grow them for their very showy flowers. What they need is a hot, sunny, dry position. And that's probably because their ancestors actually come from South Africa. Although we appreciate them for their wonderfully brilliant flowers, they have another quality too, and that is their foliage. Often when you touch it, it's soft and felty. And if you rub it, many of them have the most beautiful scents and aromas too. This has to be one of their all-time favourites. It's called Attar of Roses. It's used widely in perfumery. There's no fragrance of it from here. It's not until I rub its leaves and release the scent from the little perfume glands on the back of the leaves that I can experience this delicious scent. It really does smell of roses. This is one called Felicifolium. It means with leaves like a fern. And if you touch this finely divided foliage, it sticks to your hand. If you smell it, it smells like balsam. Now, why on earth should pelagoniums have scented foliage? In the case of most plants, it's the flowers that bear the scent to bring in and attract insects. I think that what we experience as quite a pleasant, interesting smell is actually a deterrent when it comes to some herbivore coming along and really fancying a chomp on them. It just puts them off completely. But as far as we're concerned, this perfume that they bear is an added attraction to this wonderful family of plants. As well as their gorgeous flowers and their highly scented leaves, 
Many of them have culinary uses too. You can use them in the kitchen to make teas, infuse them in water or add them to a sorbet, chop them up for a salad. But it's only some varieties that you can use in that way. And this is one of them. It's one of the oldest varieties. She's called Mabel Grey. She's absolutely gorgeous. Look at the shape of those leaves too, but fragrance is out of this world, really lemony, very, very zesty. What a brilliant family of plants Pelagoniums are. They have so much to offer, providing you can look after them, keep them frost free in the winter because they won't stand any degree of frost at all. There's no reason why you shouldn't have these in your house, in your garden, year after year after year. What's not to love? Press Day is always such an exciting day with famous faces all over the showground. And I'm very delighted to be joined today by actress, presenter and Chelsea regular, Dame Joanna Lumley. So welcome to Thank Chelsea. Thank you so much. And this is a huge day for you because you come nearly every year, don't you? I literally chisel it in. The only time I don't come is when I'm actually filming abroad. Otherwise, I always say it's a day I've got to be not, not available for work because I've got to come to Chelsea. And we're so lucky to come on the Monday. We're so lucky to come. I mean, that sounds awful because people will be coming during the week and the excitement. And I've got to say, the beauty of the gardens, I've been asking people, will this last the week? And particularly lilies inside the big tent. They said, they're all going to last the week. It's perfect. And today is perfect weather. Slightly overcast, so not boiling hot. A mild breeze, but not a wild wind and no rain. So it's ideal. It's so lovely just yeah. sitting here, isn't it? Isn't Martin it? Wilson has done a fantastic job for the RSPCA. He really, really has. Ravishing. Encouraging wildlife into our gardens, yes. whatever your garden yes. style. But I'm guessing over the years, you've seen a real change here. In Chelsea, the whole thing has changed because it used to be just competitions for the most beautiful garden. That was what it was. And now it's changed into all kinds of different things with themes and ideas. And you learn so much about all kinds of conditions. For instance, next door is a National Brain Appeal which is a garden for dementia. Now, you think dementia might be forgetting, becoming forgetful. Quite often, it's people who have just an altered way of perceiving things. So the next door, about seeing things. Some people who can only see things if they move. And so there's a garden full of things that move slightly so they can appreciate it. Things like that. Coming here to the, to the Burnkoos nurseries, which, um, which is for the Prince's Trust. And of course, it's quite extraordinary saying the climate is changing, so let's change the way we plant our gardens. Absolutely. Let's have plants that can survive in the dry or in the extreme yes. wet, things that can thrive. So don't go boo hoo, these things are changing. Say, let's move on, let's, yeah, let's work adapt to it. with it and think of our environment exactly. around us. I mean, do you come here for inspiration? Are you constantly tweaking your garden? Look, I'm a dream gardener, if you know what I mean. Go on, what's a dream Quite a gardener? lot of gardening is in my dreams. <laughs> because my garden at the moment, our garden at home in Stockwell is gorgeous. It's a long, thin London garden, partly shaded so that a lot of things which would flourish can't flourish in our garden because we don't have enough sunlight. But we have everything else that you could adore. We've got all kinds of fruit trees, apple, plum, pear, fig, olive, lemon. Um, we've got foxes with baby foxes. People are terribly cross me about this. They say, don't feed the foxes. This is my thinking about it. Foxes lived here long before people came. This is their home, so to be decent to them. And uh, also, you don't want foxes with the mange. I feed wild birds, I feed everything. And so foxes come under that as well. Um, and I love, I love what they've now started to call hardy plants or something. What, I, what they mean, weeds. Oh, yeah, I love you can't them. get rid of the weeds this year. No, they're not they're, weeds, but they're, they're beautiful. The and if places. you look at them, I've got Anchusa growing up and supporting roses. And the roses seem this year to be even happier with the Anchusa growing up amongst and around them. So I think that there's room for everything. And the great thing is that every time I come to Chelsea, my eyes open, 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 open. Yeah. And, uh, of course, I'm going later to the fauna and flora, which is about, um, about gorillas and how creatures, wild that animals, must be kept. An incredible in garden. It's fantastic. And it says, don't go out killing things or encroaching things. If you keep animals in the wild, you'll make much more money. Tourists will come and see them. And then the local indigenous population of people who live around there will make much more money. And have you had a chance to see the Horatio Garden? Horatio's I know that's garden. very and close I'm, to I'm your heart. I'm a patron of it, and I love it with all my heart. This is the most adorable idea, which is, it's really for spine injuries, but actually it should spread out into all hospitals. It's people who are trapped with long, painful diseases, which uh, uh, um, injuries, which require a lot of surgery and therefore a lot of recuperation. 
stuck usually inside wards, yes. suddenly the second they can come out and be in a garden, they just, it lifts their spirits, it improves it their... It does, and also they everything. can get involved with the garden They can become well, involved in the they? garden and, and it's great for the people who are visiting them. It just restores it. You see, the oddest thing is, is that although we keep being told it, we must just understand that to go and stand under a tree or to look at flowers, you get better at once. Yes. And so every day, yeah. even if you're just walking to work, look at the trees, just exactly. notice the change. Take a moment, put your phone Take away a and have a look. Put the, your phone oh, away. There's so much to see here, Joanna. Thank you oh, so look, much been for so joining us. Thank you, I ramble. Have a what? You never ramble. You <laughs> never ramble. Have a wander. Go and see our lovely Japanese designer at the end, Kat. He'd love to see you. An exquisite that. garden and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Still to come on the RHS Chelsea Flower Show, an event supported by the Newt in Somerset. Has your lawn seen better days? Well, James Wong is here with his guide to transforming it for summer. Chris Babin gets an invite to a Chelsea First, a children's picnic right here at the show. And back by popular demand, our Chelsea Clinic. It's the place to put your gardening dilemmas to our experts. And in the hot seat at the end of the show is Mark Lane. But first, it's obvious Chelsea is on a huge and ambitious scale, and you might think you need to splash the cash to be able to get a bit of this at home. But do not worry, Toby Buckland is here all week to spruce up your gardens with a little bit of Chelsea magic for a fraction of the price. comfortably and best of all your garden wouldn't be cluttered with furniture if you have an outdoor sofa and seat that's just out on its open in the sunshine there's something about it that's a bit off-putting wrap it round with greenery with cow parsley aquilegias and shrubs well you create an outdoor room with green walls yeah quite literally a living room Of course, the garden doesn't have to be large to be good for entertaining. And if proof was needed of that, well, the Stargard garden is proof positive. It's so intimate. And the reason for that, and it's such a simple thing to copy, is the planting. Again, it's cow parsley, there's a strantia, tall plants already, but plants now raised up in containers to make them even higher and create this outdoor room effect. Then there's the water feature a piece of timber that's been blackened. But it's the noise that is the important thing. The noise of the water drowns out the sounds from outside the garden, again, bringing you into the space. Now, you don't need a water feature like this. Anything that's a little bubble pond that moves that water and makes a sound would be good. If you're after some tips for alfresco entertainment. The place to come is the London Square Community Garden. It's a space centred with a massive terrazzo table. Big enough, so should the in-laws pop up unexpectedly, well, they've got a place to sit. Design-wise, it's made intimate because of the steelwork that runs over the head. But you could achieve the same thing with a regular pergola. Just any timber would do the trick. And when you've got verticals and horizontals above head height, you've got more space for flowers. I think my favourite idea that's easy to steal here is this little green edge around the base of the patio. And now, most of us have got a patio. Many of us have got raised beds. But very few of us make use of that little thin strip where they join. And so effectively, what this garden has that is so easy to copy is like a, a living skirting board around this green room. So there you have it. A few simple tips to bring a bit of Chelsea magic to your next garden gathering.
Now, when I'm at the garden centre, it's not just plants I go for. I can spend hours searching the shelves for gadgets and gizmos, anything that will make my gardening life easier. Now, for years, products like these have been launched here at Chelsea, and this year is no different. So, if you're anything like me, this next item will be right up your street. Joining me today is Dragon's Den star and Queen of Green, Deborah Meaden, and we're looking at this year's Sustainable Garden Product of the Year 2023 award. Lovely to see you again, Deborah. Lovely to be here. Well, you've had a difficult decision judging, haven't you? Really difficult. It's been a vintage year, so um, we've had more entries. We had really tough decisions to get them into the finals. And actually, yeah. when we were sitting trying to choose the one, I mean, which is great. You know, there's a lot of sustainable products now, which is fantastic. Why should we care about this award? Well, gardening is actually a huge industry. There's a lot of gardens out there. And actually, even the slightest changes to the way we garden can have a massive impact, positive impact, yeah. you know, on our wildlife and biodiversity. You know, we've got the power in the gardens. <laughs> so you've picked out a few for us to see now, some of these finalists. What are you going to go for? Well, I want to show you the kind of breadth of the, uh, of the entry. So this is, you know, this is the thing of beauty. It's a mm. hand fork. It's the lovely. Look at it. Apps, doesn't it feel beautiful? Looks yeah. beautiful. This is all literally off cuts. Um, this is this is steel. This will last absolutely forever. Now it's not cheap, but actually, if you look at the cost of it over the length of time, and that's what sustainability is all about. It actually is very cheap, you know, yeah. because it will last forever. Right. So that, you know, it's truly sustainable. Definitely, I love that. What else have we got? Well, this is probably the most sustainable product because this is literally wool cleaned wool um, and you can use it for lining your hanging baskets it's hugely water retentive um, so lining hanging baskets putting in the troughs if you're planting carrots potatoes whatever um, particularly in times of drought yeah. and it is literally sheep's wool clean sheep's wool it's, so it's like a, it smells it's so it like the outdoors lovely. isn't it yeah and it's literally like a garden sponge. It's a garden sponge, that's exactly what it is. Okay, so moving on. And this is exciting because we've all got hoses. There are, there are enough hoses in the world to go three and a half times round the earth. That is a lot of plastic. They're all plastic at the moment. This is the first one that is 60% recycled plastic. And the bit that makes it flexible is actually rubber, which is an actual product. So this is really, you know, this is game changing. Yeah. Um, and we don't think about our hoses. We use what we've used forever and a day. Well, exactly. And I think a lot of people will be interested in this one. Mm. So. Winner, who was it? Well, the winner, um, it's a, I, it really reached into me because I, I bought some wildflower meadow rolls. They came on plastic. Uh, so this is the first one to be actually made on a compostable rollout okay. matting. Yeah. So, you know, totally recycled compost and completely compostable matting that it goes out on. And we've lost 97% of our wildflower meadow since the war. So, you know, it's an important thing. Thanks so much, Deborah. And James Wong will be looking at wildflower turf later in the show. Now, one of my earliest gardening memories reminds me of being with my grandmother in her garden. She was so proud of it. And we keep it nice and tidy and pick blackberries off the bush to make a crumble and that's what sparked my interest in the outdoors so I was really excited to see for the first time ever 100 children being put on this year's guest list and keen to find out what these gardeners of the future think about Chelsea our very own big child Chris Bavin went to meet them Children don't normally play a role here at Chelsea, but this year, for the first time in the show's history, the RHS have invited 100 local school children to come and enjoy this marvellous day. I'm off to see how they're getting on, and I'm told they're about to meet a very special guest. How is it being at Chelsea today? And one of the most exciting things I've ever done in my entire life. Is it really? So you met the Princess of Wales. Yes. What did she say to you? What did you talk about? We uh, we spoke about um, how uh, it's uh, it's fascinating the, and and like fun uh, to see how like the food grows, like strawberries and how it takes time. Heather, you're a teacher at one of the local primary schools, and do you think today's trip will help inspire the children to to get more involved in gardening and horticulture? Absolutely, I do. They're Yes. <laughs> Who's got a favourite flower? Me. Tell me. Rose. Oh, excellent. Daisy. Lovely. All of them. Yes, excellent. <laughs> well, I hope you and the children enjoy the rest of your Thank day you in Chelsea. And I'm going to go and have a look at the garden that's going to end up at your school. Amazing. Thank you. See, See you there. You. Thank oh, you. Bye-bye. Bye. Harry, beautiful looking garden. And it's been designed with school children in mind. Can you tell me more about that? Absolutely. So we've been working with the charity School Food Matters, who are 
spots on this garden. So we were kind of imagining ourselves, right, yeah, kind of thinking about those landscapes of maybe Alice in Wonderland, slightly wacky spaces, and the kids have that innate love of nature. Mm. So just create natural spaces for them to run around and really get immersed in. Can we have a closer look? Absolutely, come on in. Wow. This is fabulous. Can you tell me more about this? So this is a round earth wall. The story behind this really is about food education. Obviously soil yeah. is, is you know, such a hot topic um, and a really wonderful thing to bring into to education for children. And this gives you a, a real good example, doesn't it, of how important it is. Plants make me feel calm and more like myself. I mean, that's, that is the, the, the magnitude, that's the yeah. power of, of gardening, which yeah. maybe some school children don't have access to. Yeah, you know, it's just important to be able to give them that opportunity. I think as soon as you bring school children outside, it Absolutely. just sparks their imagination, which this garden 100% does. You know, I absolutely love it. Stephen, what a, what a fabulous garden. Thank you. We're really pleased. This garden has not only been designed with children in mind, but has actually been designed by children and even planted out and built by yeah, children. Completely. We're a couple of special needs schools in Hertfordshire and actually all the way through from seven years old, the kids have been involved in growing, from seed, from cuttings. So all of this is grown by the kids and they are super, super proud, as are we. What does each different section do or represent? There are five areas to the garden. The five senses is touch with the woodland area, the smells for the herb garden, uh, the taste for the kitchen areas, and sound with the music. Well, looking at this garden, I think the kids have done you proud. Good luck with judging. Thank you very much. Fingers crossed. My goodness, what a treat for those children. Now, every day this week, Angelica and I will be meeting a host of experts and getting stuck in to give the latest gardening trends a go. I'm delighted that I'm getting my hands dirty first with floristry. And to help me today, I'm joined by florist to the stars and also royals, Simon Lysett. Welcome to the show, Simon. Thank you. But in a way, you were here first this morning. Oh, yeah, it was an early start. For a very important wedding? Yes, yes, my Minaj and Clive got married on the RHS and Eastern Eye Garden of Unity. And how are you involved? Gorgeous garlands in abundance oh, everywhere. Which we are going to recreate here. A little yes. bit of magic? Yes, exactly. So how easy is it to do? It's, it's a bit like a sort of grown-up version, almost, of making daisy chains. And the first thing you need to do is make sure that all the flower and plant material you use... I'm copying you, by the way. ..has been given a really good drink yep. in advance, because we're going to create these without any of the flowers being in water. And so prepare your flowers, give them a good drink, and then I'm snipping them off, and I'm leaving just a little short bit of stem at the end which will act as a spacer when we eventually thread our flowers together. So it means we use flu fewer flowers. So we're talking of trends. Is this something new? Because you could have garlands in your garden if you're having all your friends around for a barbecue. You might be having a wedding and you're doing yeah. flowers yourself or you could ask your florist to do it. I mean, is this a latest thing? Is this what people want this summer? It's, it's a great thing to do. It's also really inexpensive to do. You can use flowers from your garden. You don't need any particular particularly specialist kit. I've got a really lovely big needle here. Yes. You can use thread, something like wool, a bit challenging to get through. You can even use something like florist's wire and thread your flowers and on. straight through? Straight through the centre, so just being a little bit gentle as you push it through. So you said, oh gosh, doesn't got to be very careful with the needle, very haven't Very gently you? through with that needle and gently through as you pull your string. And we've double stringed it. To make sure. Is that such a word, double stringed? I think so. There we are. And what about colours? Should there be a theme or not? I don't think there ever needs to be a theme. I love all the colours. As you can see from what I'm wearing, I love all the colours. So how many days in advance? Oh, no, wrong way. That way. Got there isn't a right or a wrong way, to be um, honest. How many days in advance should you make your garland? They are relatively 
quick to make and they are not particularly long lasting except that they will also dry out and that's the joyous thing so all the garlands that we've made that are hung on Menage's garden are actually just going to gently dry out and you know how you see the confetti on the path after a wedding yes and you think oh that's nice there was a wedding here three days ago well when you look at a flower garland that's starting to just dry out a bit you can think to yourself Oh, that's nice. That was part of a celebration earlier. I'm looking behind and we've got some fabulous ones with a little bit of jewellery. There's peppers in there. Yes, you can use fruit, veg, flowers, any sort of ingredients and just build them up. You don't need to have a system. And things like a hollow stem from something like dill here, yes. if you thread that on and then thread your flower on, it acts almost like a little bead that's... as a spacer. That's in not between. bad for me. And I've got to ask you, there was a very important coronation just a few weeks ago. Yes. And we did see the Princess of Wales wearing flowers in her hair. It was a sort of garland, but it wasn't flowers, but it looked like beautiful diamonds made in a flower yes, design. Yes, a gorgeous floral are garland. Are you seeing all the brides wanting this? A lot more brides are wanting it, yes. Because I can imagine everybody saying, now that's what I want. I want beautiful flowers in my hair and for the bridesmaids as well like that <gasps> very nice so easy to make very easy to make in effect you're using one type of flower i've done there thread them all together tie it at the back the ribbon's just an embellishment simon may i of course what do we think does it work fit for a princess not coming off now <laughs> thank you so much now with may almost over and summer right around the corner there's one gardening dilemma we'll all be thinking about our lawns do it do we mow them or not that is the question well here is our guide to ensure your lawn is greener than ever in more ways than one it's james wong what it says on the tin you simply leave your mower in the shed for a month and this allows this incredible mosaic of wildflowers a mini meadow Over here, I've stumbled across another alternative lawn that I think is just truly stunning. It's like a pastel paint box just completely exploded with visalia, with corn cockle, with toad flax, just truly beautiful. Now, this is the kind of thing you would sow from seed, and you can actually buy loads of different mixes pre-created for you at different nurseries, or you can even create your own cocktail of different species. And if you get bored with something like this at the end of the year, you can chop it all down, dig it into the soil, and sow a new mix. Well, we're nearly at the end of our first day here at Chelsea, but we've definitely got time for our favourite bit of the show. Ooh. Yes, it's back. It's the Chelsea Clinic, and it's open for business. Yes, we've got our very own garden expert, Mark Lane, joining us today. Hello. Welcome back. You. Hello. Are you ready for some questions? I am. I yeah, let's gonna, go for it. You're going to nail these. <laughs> um, Anne Odoft um, got in contact on Facebook. She says, my Acer has seeds growing which are dropping a sticky substance. Never seen this before. Oh, well, this is probably something called honeydew. So this is excreted by aphids when they're actually being harvested by ants. Sounds rather bizarre, I it know. Does. Don't worry about it. It's completely natural. But if you're really worried, just spray it off with a little watering cap, you know, spray in a, okay. what do you call it, on your hose. Yes. Just spray them off. They won't do any problem whatsoever. Good. There you go. Um, Craig Williams got in touch on Instagram. He says there's so much variety in native British wildflowers. Which would you recommend for a novice with a very small garden? Good old oxide daisy. You cannot go wrong with the oxide daisy. Really cheerful. That lovely sort of typical white flower with that yellow centre will flower for months on end. Then something like good old foxgloves. We all love a foxglove. Oh, glove. I love foxgloves. <laughs> and of course, cow parsley. Cow parsley will just self seed everywhere. It will give you structure, give you colour, give you scent, everything you need. Lovely, lovely. Now, BBC Breakfast Carol Cup has got in contact. She has a question about her roses. Let's have a look. 
I'd like to ask the clinic how to deal with black fly. They destroy my roses every year. They start off looking fantastic and then a few days later they just have all these holes in the leaves and I don't know how to treat it. Black fly is a real problem. Now, I mean, if you're, if you're not faint-hearted, go out there with your fingers and literally just squish them between yes. your fingers. If not, again, you could get, use a hose to spray them off. But a really lovely little tip, which is really simple, just place a bird feeder near your roses. Every time the birds come down for a little morsel, they'll see the black fly, they'll come down, take the black fly away, and they'll do the work for you. And that is a better way of doing it, exactly. isn't it? Definitely. Exactly. And we like to encourage the birds we back do. into our gardens. And Betty Saunders on Facebook, I have a Strancia Major, and it's flowered beautifully for three years. The plant still looks healthy, but the flowers are flopping and limp. Any advice? Well, it really depends how it's being grown. So if it's being grown in a pot, then maybe it could be being eaten by larvae, which you don't want at all. So all I would say is take it out of the pot, change all of that compost, give it real lovely fresh compost in there and that will be absolutely fine if it's been grown in the ground then just make sure that you water it well but you need soil that's really good free draining soil as well so just make sure you might want to add in some horticultural grit and should you be keeping them going year after year or do you think you should replace them? Well she said they were three years old yes. so every sort of two or three years you should always divide your herbaceous perennials and an astrantia is a herbaceous perennial so by doing that it just means you're going to reinvigorate that plant and bring it back to life. Oh that was brilliant thank you. She's got a brand new garden she's taking notes aren't you? I am taking notes. Good good Got good, some good. wisteria make sure it was pruned so that you know and all yeah. that so it's looking lovely. Might Mark, have to get you to help me. Yeah. As ever. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's all we've got time for today. And right, that is it for us. That's right. And there's definitely a buzz on the showground because there's going to be a royal tour happening very soon, which is mm -hmm. exciting. Oh, yes, yeah. we are so excited. <laughs> and now make sure you tune in later today to see all of that and more with Monty and Joe on BBC Two at 7.30 p.m. And don't forget, we'll be back here on BBC One tomorrow at 3.45. Put it in your diary with all the news and excitement of... <laughs>